Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so my name is Chris Brewer. I'm the Africa Cholera Coordinator based in Nairobi. And today I want to present some of the work that we've been doing in the Africa region with our national societies. Um, just to look sort of first globally, um, this is our approach towards cholera as an organization. So working in preparedness, this is the one wash approach, which maybe some of you have heard about or come across. We want to look at preparedness. We want to deliver long-term wash initiatives and the internal and external advocacy and resource mobilization. So this is at global level. Now, when we move down to the preparedness level, what we've done in the Africa region is we've developed three elements. And what, what's important about these three elements is what we've tried to do in developing the approach is that we've looked at what are our natural advantages. And we see the permanence of branches and having our community volunteers. So these are, these are very sort of important. Uh, these are very important uh, elements that, you know, we have a natural advantage here. Uh, so we've tried to exploit that nat natural advantage uh, by looking at how we can pre-position items in branches and train our community volunteers so that we are very close to responding. We can respond quickly out of branches rather than from HQ level or even bringing in teams from outside the country. So three elements here. Uh, first of all, oral rehydration therapy. So we'll both have trained volunteers in the communities, uh, but also when there's an outbreak, we can go to scale and we have oral rehydration point kits in our branches, which can then be mobilized with volunteers. And we can increase the amount of oral rehydration therapy being offered. Obviously, all elements here are done in coordination with district health authorities. The second element, which I'm going to talk about today, is our branch wash intervention teams. So we not only want to save lives through offering oral rehydration therapy, we also want to break transmission. So if you like, this is our version of the CATI. And then the third element, uh, and one that we've recently uh, started to work on, is to ensure that our volunteers can support OCV campaigns. Obviously, we're in the communities, we have a good relationship with communities, so community mobilization for OCV campaigns is an obvious area where we can be involved. So these are the three elements of our preparedness. Okay, and there, in picture, you get everything in pictures as well as me presenting, so you're very lucky. Okay, so here's our ORP points, and they will refer the serious cases or they will treat in communities. And here's the branch wash intervention teams and OTV. Okay. So, how... How do these three elements work together? How do we see these three elements working together? So first of all, we have our ORT volunteers who can work in the community and give treatment or refer. Then if needed, if there is an outbreak, we can put ORPs in place or rehydration points in place to increase our capacity to give treatment. The cases are obviously registered either by our community volunteers or by the oral rehydration points, or obviously the government health facility is registering cases coming in there. 
And so working in coordination with local health authorities, we're trying to identify outbreak hotspots. And that's when the branch WASH intervention teams go to visit communities. And what we're doing, we're sort of combining approaches. So it may be that we're using our oral rehydration points and our WASH intervention teams at the same time, but they work very closely in combination. And then if there is an OCV campaign, we would sort of be involved in that in terms of mobilization. Okay, so why the branch WASH intervention team? Okay, we recognize, as has been said quite a lot already, the, the lack of long-term solutions to WASH. What we feel is that having trained community volunteers and having resources at branch level, we can actually reduce the transmission at community and household level. So we're working at those two levels. We base this on the MSF five tier approach. We developed it and we felt, okay, we, this is too broad for us. We need to concentrate. And we said, okay, households and community, that's where we have our strengths and that's where we want to work. Okay, so working with the local authorities, we're basically identifying the cholera locations, assessing risks and intervening to interrupt transmission. Now, one element listening to sort of this morning, one element of the work here that we'll talk about later is that often there'll be an outbreak and a cutty may respond and then that work ends with the outbreak. What we're trying to do, because we have this permanence, because we have these community volunteers, what we want to do is put in things in the response that can maybe extend this period of engagement with the communities. So leaving protection in place and reducing the possibility of recurrent outbreaks. That's what we're aiming at. We want to extend the impact of the response, if you like. Okay, so just we, we, we just I'm just going to go through very quickly what we do on the course uh, with our volunteers. Okay, so here's the course as it is. It's usually a four day course that we do with the volunteers. And this gives you an idea of everything. I mean, what, what's important here is initially we're going to case households and the neighborhood, very much like the CATI approach. I think maybe what we're doing differently, but I, I would, you know, please correct me if I'm wrong. When we're asking the questions, we're doing a quick assessment with the households. And when we do that, we have what we call community link questions because there are some questions you ask a household but the answer is relevant to the community so for example where do you get your water is leading you into a community response not a household response and what we see is that we want to have a parallel response we want to work with households but we also want to work with communities Okay, so the module one, this is sort of trying to give the volunteer the overview of what we're about. And here, the identification of cases and moving, we've changed our acronym as of last night, so you have to forgive that. Okay, we're now called Wash It. <laughs> okay, so this is the triggers, working with district health authorities moving to the cases. Okay, so then what we're doing very quickly, they're carrying out assessments in the households and in the communities. And 
and assessing risks. Okay, so share, shared spaces in the communities. So risk interruption. What we get our, what we want our volunteers to be able to do is to actually do the actions, but at the same time, train households to do them into the future. Okay, so it's, it's a sort of dual purpose there. You're doing the intervention, the volunteers are doing the interventions, but with, with the household so that they can do those actions in future. Okay, so here are the interventions. And then finally, leaving protection through kits. All right. So what we're trying to do here is, like I said, extend the impact of our response into the medium term. Because what we seem to have at the moment is we respond, we stop responding. There's a gap. Everybody says, well, there should be some permanent wash infrastructure going in here to prevent this. But we all know that that doesn't happen. A lot of the time that doesn't happen. So is there a medium term solution that we can look at whereby we extend out the solution and cover that medium term solution? Des solutions à moyen terme. Et c'est ce dont je vais vous parler par la suite. So here are just some of the items. Ici, vous voyez quelques éléments de matériel que nous utilisons. Par exemple, what we want to do is sort of make sure that we can look into how we can work with the community in sanitation. We have our community volunteers, so we continue to do these interviews and assessments. Okay, so we're going to look at how we can work with the community in sanitation. We have our community volunteers, so we continue to do these interviews and assessments. Okay, so we're going to look at how we can work with the community in sanitation. We have our community volunteers, so we continue to do these interviews and assessments. Okay, so we're going to look at how we can work with the community in sanitation. We have our community volunteers, so we continue to do these interviews. Nous travaillons à Malawi, par exemple, avec des, des systèmes de chlorination. Par exemple, sur un lieu, il y avait huit puits, dont seulement un qui était propre, et les gens s'alimentaient avec de l'eau de surface. Et ce qu'ils ont fait pour réduire les risques, c'était de, de rajouter des systèmes de chlorination à ces eaux de surface. Donc on a nos bénévoles et on a la, la permanence de nos branches. Ce sont des unités avec lesquelles nos partenaires peuvent travailler en permanence. Donc la chlorination ne signifie pas qu'on rajoute du chlore tout le temps. C'est peut-être en mettant en place un accord avec la communauté. On travaille avec eux pour rajouter du chlore au système d'alimentation en eau potable à certaines périodes où le risque est élevé, où il y a des saisons du choléra, où c'est plus important. Si les compétences sont là, cela peut être une mesure de prévention temporaire. Ok, donc... A bit on ways that we're working. We've. On parle notre façon de travailler. Donc avec le soutien du CDC, nous avons développé la méthodologie en Zambie et au Malawi. Et nous sommes en train d'étendre cela dans d'autres pays. Nous essayons de chercher des façons de travailler plus efficaces, plus intelligentes. Travaillons avec nos sociétés nationales partenaires, par exemple la Croix-Rouge britannique, qui ont un projet à long terme au Nigeria, au Kenya. Nous avons compris qu'un programme WASH à long terme et un programme de réduction de catastrophes à long terme, d'autres programmes, tout cela euh, peut fonctionner en parallèle. Et donc, nous essayons de faire en sorte que nos partenaires, euh, nos sociétés nationales, est en œuvre nos méthodes sur les, le terrain. Nous travaillons également avec des collègues à Genève 
savoir comment investir et comment mettre de l'argent dans les branches, dans les communautés avant qu'une épidémie se produit. Et ce sont des choses qui se passent à plusieurs niveaux et dans plusieurs lieux. Et cela peut être très important pour étendre l'échelle, agrandir l'échelle de notre travail. Et ce que nous faisons, ce que nous avons fait récemment au Niger, au Nigeria, euh, suite aux urgences euh, constantes, c'est de mettre en place des financements d'urgence pour augmenter la, la préparation à ces épidémies. Souvent, nous avons des, des mesures préventives et des mesures réactives qui, tra qui travaillent indépendamment, qui ne travaillent pas ensemble, qui ne sont pas coordonnées. Il faut travailler en parallèle sur les deux, euh, les deux approches, préventive et, et, et d'urgence. Ce que nous souhaitons faire, donc rapidement, donc ce que nous prévoyons pour 2029, 2022, les déploiements. Euh, les déploiements sont prévus dans tous ces pays que vous voyez à l'écran. Et nous sommes toujours à la recherche de partenaires, bailleurs, de partenaires de recherche et de tous ceux qui sont impliqués dans les opérations. Merci beaucoup.